the stone to start crafting into smooth stone. If I wanted to use coal for it, I could. However, I want to actually set up the uh, the full supply chain for it beforehand. So I will either want to set up a, uh, a hopper there, a hopper there, uh, on top of the hopper, which will then of course have another hopper on top of it, which is where uh, that hopper will actually be facing into the furnace that's going to sit there. Um, but the hopper between them will just point straight down into this hopper because I don't want to mix the fuel line with the product line. Uh, but this will allow me to uh, build into the, uh, the entire thing a storage system for the fuel because eventually that kelp is going to start really, really having a lot of kelp. And honestly, I'd just swap out like the smoker. <laughs> uh, or no, I'd swap out the hop or the, the top furnace for a hopper. And I just hook up the kelp down here, swap that out for a smoker. It'd be fine. Um, alternatively, I could end up redirecting that hopper into a, uh, well, no, I guess I wouldn't really want to use this setup anyways. I'd probably just strip away these hoppers and hook up, uh, the smoker. Speaking of which, I do need to start up a smoker down here. So that's another thing I need to look into. Uh, let's see, was there anything else I needed to look into other than, you know, maps? <laughs> um, I can't really place the blast furnace until the block of coal is done smelting. It's 80 items because good god why not right um let's see other things i can do come on come on surface almost almost took damage Uh, put away the shears. I suppose I probably should have put away some of these construction materials. Okay, so that hasn't harvested again yet. But... It's definitely starting to fill up. So yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. I'll just casually stroll over here so I don't induce hunger. Speaking of which... Everything looks to be in order. I do need more planks, so let me get some of those.
Is that just here? No? Okay. Uh, so yeah, comparing the maps, you can see the vast difference. Like, I've been working on this mountaintop. And I've been doing some good progress. So, since I last updated the map, you can definitely tell that there's been progress. Now, that, ma that mountain over there, uh, that one, just behind the kelp farm, uh, can't really point to it at the moment, that one. Uh, that one's just always been plain because that one doesn't go up high enough. So eventually the snow will stop forming on this one and then it'll look more along the lines of a, uh, like a stone mesa. Almost like the area to the south of it, actually. Yeah, it'll look more on the map uh, along the lines of a stone mesa like... Hold on. Like this one. Oh uh, boy. So much to do, so little time to do it in. And then when you have a little to do, you have so much time to do it in. <laughs> because, yeah. So much to do, so little time to do it in. Unless you only have a little to do, at which point, so much time to do it in. <laughs> Yeah, the various, uh, the various tasks that I have been, uh, already, uh, planned are definitely starting to shape up. They're starting to really come together as my, uh, production capacity increases. My production cap uh, capabilities are definitely uh, getting some serious upgrades. I know it doesn't really seem like much because all these other YouTubers are all like, oh yeah, it's like episode 40, check out my mega base. It's like, well, A. For the longest time, I couldn't find diamonds, okay? <laughs> Cut me some slack. I couldn't find diamonds, man. That's just sad. I was sitting there mining at Y equals uh, 14, thinking that was the correct coordinates. I wanted Y equals 11. Mined out like four or 500 blocks. On top of that, I'm not doing any jump cuts for for my playthrough, so all these YouTubers who are like, oh, well, I got, like, episode 20, and I got this mega base, it's like, well, yeah, but you did, like, seven jump cuts where you did a Twitch live stream for, like, eight hours straight. And they're like, well, yeah, I suppose I did that. It's like, yeah, I suppose you did, didn't you? <laughs> so 
so yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like I'm making good progress, but believe it or not, I'm very adept at this. It's just... Progress has been very unnaturally slow this playthrough. No real explainable reason why, it just has. Uh, so, as a result, I've not really gotten very far. If you're wondering what one of the useful traits of snow is, by the way, uh, you can utilize snow to uh, actuate your uh, your uh, chances of basically mining out bedrock. Uh, you can mine bedrock. <laughs> If, if you know what you're doing. So, that's one use of snow that you may or may not be aware of. But yeah, you, you can mine bedrock with snow if done properly. It's a glitch. It's not normal. Uh, like, they probably already patched it out, to be honest. But, hey, it's a thing. They used to be able to do it. Uh, they did it on... Uh, what, what was that? Uh, truly Bedrock. They did it on the Truly Bedrock server with uh, Silent Whisper. Oh my. This is a thunderstorm. I should be careful. Keep my eyes peeled. I might spot skeleton horses over there if I'm not careful. Uh, I, I actually should hop in a bed, though, because I don't remember the last time I slept. So phantoms might start coming after me if I don't. Uh, yes, it does deal damage for me to hop out of the bed at that height because I am actually dropping three whole blocks. Well, four whole blocks because you gotta count the feet. Uh, two blocks is safe. Three blocks, I think, is safe. Yeah, three blocks is safe. Two blocks is safe. Four blocks, not safe. Uh, that actually kind of makes sense. That lines up with the same thing that they do in Dungeons & Dragons, actually. Because if each block is one cubic meter, that's the official measurement, in case you ever wondered about Minecraft. Uh, if each block is one cubic meter, then that means that... Uh, four block fall would be roughly 12 feet. Uh, in D&D, they say if you move more than 10 feet, if you're falling more than 10 feet, that you take damage. So that actually makes sense uh, as far as uh, taking damage, uh, taking fall damage goes. That makes sense. That adds up uh, accurately at that. Uh, I tried explaining to my AI a long time ago that 
Minecraft is so useful that Minecraft could technically be used to train AI about things like gravity, uh, hunger, resource management, all kinds of things. And it's like, <laughs> its response to me was uh, something along the lines of, in before Minecraft used for uh, basically real life simulations. It's like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You know, that's, uh, that's decently accurate. Um, Minecraft is so useful that eventually Minecraft could be used to just calculate actual simulations for things. It's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> A lot of people are afraid to admit that. Like, Minecraft is not just good. Minecraft is good, good. Like, Minecraft is so good that you really kind of got to worry about it, because Minecraft's just that good. You know? It's like, wow, how does that work? Well, <laughs> as you map out everything, you will quickly come to realize that Minecraft has everything you needed to train your AI. Well, what about training it about end-to-end -end logistics? Well, funny you should mention that. Minecraft uh, has this lovely thing called a hopper minecart. You may have heard of it. <laughs> the hopper minecart is able to teach end-to-end -end logistics because you can put a hopper in the minecart and then with the hopper in the minecart, you're able to then, uh, you know, pull items out of and place items into the, uh, into the, uh, various inventories that you have around. What this means is that you end up with a wide variety of interactions that you're capable of performing with this hopper minecart, allowing you to manipulate uh, and articulate all kinds of different interactions. For example, uh, you can uh, utilize the hopper minecart to fill up a furnace. Well, on top of that, you can also utilize the hopper mine cart to pull out of a furnace. This means that because of a kelp block, you're able to uh, you're able to pull out the kelp from your dried kelp or from your kelp farm. You're able to transport that kelp from your kelp farm into your furnace. You're able to then smelt that kelp into dried kelp, where you're able to then bring that kelp to a player who's just sitting there crafting blocks of kelp all the time, just non-stop blocks of kelp. And then that player is able to have those blocks of kelp get uh, just dropped on the floor, where they're picked up by another hopper minecart where they are then delivered to a furnace as fuel. Now, you have picked up, delivered, crafted, picked up again, delivered again, and received, ultimately, an entirely... Uh, an almost entirely automated... Uh, system where you've basically crafted almost entire autonomously uh, almost autonomously entirely crafted a block of kelp for your furnace fuel. Because of that 
you're now able to actually make use of all of that kelp. Which means you're now burning kelp while you're crafting with kelp and now you're able to utilize that to basically springboard your operation into the stratosphere by means of utilizing the 20 item uh, burn rate of kelp to burn up more kelp in your kelp cooker you know uh, which of course is being fed more kelp by minecart fully automatically on a regular basis and since you have that uh, person just endlessly crafting kelp uh, into block format uh, then you know you're you're able to have a very detailed and very uh, a, a very surprisingly good uh, simulation of a semi-automatic crafting system with uh, inclination towards discovering a fully automatic variant. Uh, because you already know the recipe. The recipe is not going to change. Okay. You already know exactly where everything's going. So basically all you have to do is automate the last step in the process in order to... Here, I need to put these torches down so I can pick up all this dirt. Uh, but you need to basically automate the last step in the process in order to fully automate the entirety of basically crafting fuel. Now you have unlimited fuel. Now what are you going to do? You know? That's always a question people always want to hear. Well, now that you have unlimited fuel, now what do you want to do? Glad you asked. <laughs> I've got a few ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, people always want to think of ways to break the system. It's like, well, here's the simplest way to break the system. Automate everything. I know what you're thinking, that doesn't sound very broken. Well, it's kind of not. But at the same time, have you ever noticed just how broken it is when you're able to do pretty much anything you want because you got an unlimited budget? Well, guess what it's like when you have unlimited fuel in a game where 90% of the game involves managing your furnace supplies so that you don't run out of fuel. Hmm, yep, you guessed it. Infinite fuel, infinite power. So, that basically means I'm able to figure out how to craft a system that has unlimited power. With this system, I would be able to do anything I want. Have I ever mentioned that I've recognized the <laughs> reference of offering coffee to someone who was referencing spiffing Brit? <laughs> um, yeah, I recognize the whole unlimited power, unlimited, like, basically everything scenario being extremely overpowered. I recognize it because I'm very good at this. <laughs> uh, like, I, I do this kind of thing regularly. So, this is not something new to me. This is... Th this is regular. This is par for the course. Uh, for me, at least. Um, 
a lot of people wonder, you know, what is it that you do all day? Uh, me? Oh, well, I'm, you know, just doing a bunch of little minor things, you know, planning my D&D games, uh, which, by the way, uh, if anyone has advice on how to record those, uh, I would love it because I would like to keep the ability to use voice chat in my games, but if I'm going to record the games, then I can't really record it on Discord because the recording software I use utilizes the microphone, and so I'm not really sure what to do about that. Uh, I might just have to log in from my computer, I guess, and then just record the internal audio from my phone as a camera app of sorts. Uh, some sort of third-person observer type. I don't know. Uh, I'll figure it out, obviously, if no one tells me, but advice is welcome. Uh, be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what your, what your advice is, because, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I'm sitting here trying to figure out, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to handle the uh, sound section of OBS, to be honest. Uh, like, I, I know that a lot of it is just personalization, uh, customization per, uh, like, per operating system type of situation. So there's not really a lot that many people are able to do to provide advice because each situation is unique when it comes to providing uh, an accurate uh, sound model, I suppose, uh, an accurate, uh, an accurate tuning for the sound. Um, each situation is unique. I'm aware of this. That's just you know, that's a property of sound. That's an innate thing. I'm aware. But at the same time, I would like to be able to actually, uh, you know, not need to worry about that kind of stuff. So if someone who knows what they're doing could provide the proper info, uh, information to make it so that I don't need to look all of that up. That'd be great, because I have no idea what half of that stuff does. Like, I know it's called a sound gate, and I know vaguely what it does. Uh, the basic purpose of a sound gate is to block out the noise between uh, either above or below a certain range. Like, that much is obvious. So I can take that knowledge and I can figure out how to operate the sound gate by just playing around with it. You know, toggle the option to that way, see how it plays. Toggle the option to that way, see how it plays. How about something in the middle? What if I do this way? What if I do that way? You know, I can figure that out. That's that's basic human talent. We figure things out, such as sound gates and how they work and why. <laughs> but as far as knowing what it all is and how it all works and why, not a clue. I have not got a clue on that because... Nobody ever explained it to me, you know? How would I know? Uh, I mean, I know enough to know how to operate it. I know enough to know how to uh, figure out its function. I know not to blow out the tweaker, uh, the tweeters of my speakers. 
<laughs> because blowing out the tweeters is basically like the death of the speaker. <laughs> so don't blow out the tweeters, kids, because good lord, you'll have to replace the whole damn speaker. And that's expensive. Like, really expensive. If you want to piss your parents off and they got a really old stereo, blow the tweeter. Uh, you'll, you'll piss them off real quick. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that's a good way to piss off pretty much everyone. Uh, you, you blow the tweeter on a speaker and it, you're not looking uh, like you're going to get anything uh, beneficial out of the deal, you know? You're, you're, you're not looking like you're going to get a, a nice reception, let's put it that way. <clears throat> Ah, it was hidden. There was gravel in play, and nothing could really reveal it because it was buried under rock, and then beside it was, of course, gravel. So it was just hidden, just completely hidden. There we go. Okay, now I just need to do over here. Um, I believe there's one more up here. Yes, there is. In fact, I'm going to do one better. I am going to put this in as the stairs. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this would be a good mem uh, moment to mention, to remember to like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the video. Uh, well, subscribe to the channel. You don't subscribe to the video. Uh, so yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on the video. Helps me, helps the channel, tells YouTube this the type of content that people should be watching. Uh, because this is this is what Minecraft looks like. This is a Minecraft Let's Play. You know, uh, I'm slowly taking over this mountaintop with jack-o'-lanterns. Um, I'm pushing back the snow ever so slowly.
up here it's really obvious because, well, I mean, it's really obvious. <laughs> But then there's areas like over here where, yeah, not as obvious. Dig that out, and then I dig that out, and then I dig this out. I dig this out. How much further can I go? All the way. Okay, looks like I'm making really amazing progress clearing out this mountain. I'm really excited about finally getting all of this cleared up. Uh, I'm going to want a torch here because monsters. There we go. Oh, what am I doing? I can climb up here through this. There we go. Yeah, see, plenty of spawnable spots. It don't did not mean to jump off the ledge. I was actually trying to figure out why I just placed a torch at my feet. Trying to put one over there. Okay, I caught the torch. How's the overflow? Not bad. Looks like it hasn't changed since last time. That's good. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't check these chests, it's because they're not hooked up. Like, none of these four are hooked up. 
if I can get in the water and sink down fast enough. Yeah, you can see now the hoppers are all pointing over here. And then you get to right here and they turn and they start pointing into the chests. So that's why these overflow chests are, well, overflowing. Uh, the whole point of them is specifically to allow everything to get uh, properly harvested. Um, even if everything's all backed up and full. Uh, but since they don't really have any way to drain out, the best way to utilize them is to simply just feed them back into the system. Uh, if I wanted to, I could collect all of these hoppers and chests, and I would be able to actually bring them to a storage chest, like, right about here, uh, on this line. But, you know, equal with these chests. Uh, I could do that, but I don't, because that would require me to basically uh, send all of the items across using, uh, well, I suppose technically I'd be using the same, same style of method. Um, yeah, that's the exact same method, actually, now that I think about it. The plan was basically to shuffle them all over using the hoppers and just funnel it all into one chest using everything as storage overflow but I guess it's already being done kind of so I don't really know what to say on it did reinstall the blast furnace, but that's because that was still, uh... That's because that was still cooking all of the stone. I want another hopper. Did I not pick that up? I did not. So I've got two hoppers here. I want one facing there, one facing there. Now, Go in here, load up that fuel, go in here, load up that fuel, load up some stuff for it to burn,
I'll split the dried kelp block in half. Actually, no. I'll split it into thirds. 20 for you. 20 for you. Actually, I'll put that over there. That over there. Okay. And then for the last 22 dried kelp, simply put, blast furnace. Deposit the torches for now. Since I'm down here, same for that. Um, right, I was going to attach a barrel to the top of this thing to make it easy access. There we go. That is a very tall build. Now, if I want, I can also add barrels there and there. And now it actually has a massive reserve space for fuel truly a colossal amount of storage space. Um, oh, you know where this won't block out the light? The lanterns. <laughs> Actually, does that dim the lights? I can't tell. I honestly can't. Um, I will put that on the lantern, though, because, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Well, I suppose while I'm down here, I want to make use of these. Uh, there's the minecart. Once again, I did not deposit that darn bow. Anything else I can do down here? Well, I suppose I will want to polish the blocks. There we go. Oh my, you're a big boy. Definitely hit like one too. <laughs> Wow, quarter of a stack of slime. Not bad. Oh, and there's more over here. Did they suffocate or something? Jeez, what happened to them? That's all filled out. Now I need over here filled out. Okay. 
so I've got over there and then I suppose I needed more diorite. I did bring granite, so I can finish off the granite. Ignore the gigantic slime hopping on the floor above me. Once again, I have found myself fresh out of granite. I managed to fill in all of the andesite, but the diorite's still short, and of course, the granite is still short. Six slime. Not bad. I uh, will go ahead and rip out the mid floor here, as the mid floor is not really providing anything too special, uh, other than just more spawnable surface area for the slimes, I guess. Uh, uh, that's not really something that's too relevant to my interests at the moment. I have more than enough slime, not enough of everything else. Uh, what this will allow me to do is this allows me to gather up the lanterns so that I'm able to install the lanterns on the lower floor because one of the things which I am lacking is lanterns. I'm lacking the pumpkins for the lanterns. So this will give me the opportunity to utilize the material which I am in most dire need of on the lower floor, and that is pumpkins. The mid floor has all of the pumpkins that it needs, however the lower floor does not. Now I'm just going through, purposefully stepping in all of these little 
potholes that I have previously created in order to ensure that I did not miss any materials. I need a new pickaxe. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, as you can see, all of the pumpkins fit right in place. Whole thing looks real nice and groovy. Groovy. That's a great line. Great movie. I don't remember the name of that movie. But I remember that chainsaw for a hand the dude had. And I remember that catchphrase. <laughs> groovy. <laughs> He just said it so impeccably. It was so well delivered and articulated. So there's the polished andesite. There's the regular andesite. There's the diorite. And... I suppose I want to probably set up something for these storage chests. How's the uh, process coming along decently? Progressing. Put that in there. Throw that in there. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay. Let me grab a few more of these. This will definitely fill it up. Yeah, there it goes. Good solid backlog of smooth stone. I don't know how much smooth stone will get made using the kelp. Hopefully not too much, because that is not a lot of kelp to be working with. Uh, I need to deposit that bow before I forget again. So let me go ahead and do that. Do, do, do swimming, swimming, swimming. And surface. <laughs> yeah. It's a close call every time. I also, on top of needing to deposit this bow, need to craft a pickaxe. So. First, let's find where I stored my bow. Now, I want to see something about the grindstone. Where is my grindstone? All the way out at the farm. Of course. Oh, you know what else I was going to do? I was actually going to feed those things with lava buckets. Uh, so, I should probably hurry up and do that. <laughs> I think I need more iron for that, though, because I don't think I have enough... Well, 
No, I know where a bucket is. <laughs> the real question is, how do I plan to reach it? <laughs> the answer is... Through the lava, of course. Uh, I will be returning this lava bucket, obviously. Uh, well, bucket. This one's a lava bucket. Uh, this one's about to be a lava bucket as soon as I pick up the lava. Pro tip. Don't walk around your base holding the lava bucket in your hand. Seriously, it's a dumb move. Don't do it. <laughs> I still didn't put away the bow. I repaired the bow. <laughs> but I also didn't want to forget about utilizing these lava buckets. Because this is kind of important. Each lava bucket is worth a lot of items. So it's kind of important that I don't forget the lava buckets. Uh, the bow, not so important. That's just an unenchanted bow that I'm repairing. You know? before I forget again. Craft slime into slime block. Okay. Now we're starting to get somewhere. And yeah, even with all the snow going on up there, it's still not actually collecting very much snow. That's because all of these are generating heat. So it's actually melting the snow as fast as it's forming. place too, but that does tell me how many I wanted. I wanted eight. Okay.
Yeah, we're making some good progress here. You know, I would increase the speed of progress, but a lot of it is just scaling. You know, I need to scale up the operations. Uh, I need a bigger farm. I need a. I need more iron. I need more hoppers. I need, you know, more of this, more of that. It's just scale. I need to scale up. That's really the biggest thing holding me back, is I just need to upscale everything. I will go ahead and transport the leather to the appropriate location, down by the enchanting table. <laughs> Makes sense when you think about it, doesn't it? It's like, why does he store the leather all the way down there? Well. Where would you store all of the books? Oh, yeah. 